Hi everyone, my name is Imani. On this episode, I'll be speaking to Marcia Ndlovu from the Global Teachers Institute in South Africa. She has over 10 years of teaching experience and I'm so excited for her to share her experiences as an educator and at the Institute. Hi Marcia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Take us back to March 2020, just as the lockdown was announced in South Africa. What was going through your mind? How did it impact the work that you do as a teacher? First of all, felt surreal. I think we all had a, a moment of absorbing the whole situation at different levels as teachers, as students. There were those who were fearful. There were those who were found it funny as in, no, this cannot be happening. And Italy had no idea of the gravity of the situation. Then the lockdown happened and there was chaos how are we going to manage how is education going to happen how are we going to move forward so when everything hit there were ideas that were shared of how things could happen moving forward and I'd have to say we were not prepared what kind of challenges came up because of the pandemic within the school yes we'd use devices dealing with education for example whatsapp Personally, students, that's a fun social media aspect of things and not something that will be taken seriously. Another was network and connectivity and data because students had to go back to their homes and they all live in different parts of the country and not all the areas have good connectivity and also not all students could afford data. So having an attendance in class that was full was a huge issue. For your students, especially the ones that might not have had easy access to some of these resources, how did they cope with the changes in the modes of teaching? They didn't cope very well. One of the things that we could do is basically keep on sending documents that can be emailed, but also sent via WhatsApp to them so that at a later stage when they have data, they can have access to it. What kind of skills and resources did you need to learn? Well, one, um, having to change my mind about using WhatsApp for personal purposes <laughs> and actually fully explore all the aspects of Zoom. For example, I will send a message to my class. No one will respond. And I don't know if they've read it. I do not know you could check on Zoom if somebody's read your message. So I had to upscale myself on finding out all these things. And so we had to have meetings on the side as teachers. Some were way ahead in terms of Google Classroom. And so they'd be assisting us, marking assignments online, took a lot of learning on our parts as well. How did the students respond to all these changes? And probably the ones who hated school in the first place were like, yay! <laughs> but very few were happy. They missed the face-to-face. They missed interacting with their friends. They missed group discussions. They had to do a lot of learning on your own. And so those students who were already struggling with learning on their own found it very, very difficult. And they felt really isolated and alone. But there were those who embraced it and ran with it. What kind of advice would you give to other educators facing similar challenges that you faced? Be flexible, give yourself time, and accept this is what is happening. Have you observed mental health impacts in your students, in your teaching during this time? So there was a response of, we're highly sensitive. Uh, If you say something, we break. Or students just shut down emotionally. Also, there's a sort of an anger that was being expressed. So it could be directed to anyone. How are you coping with the mental health issues amongst your students? You can't cope with other people's mental health without actually checking on your own mental health. Before I realized that I was taking on other people's emotions. So I was basically reacting rather than responding to the emotional responses that my students were giving me. What are some tools or strategies that you used as an educator to take care of your own mental health? For me, it was acknowledging what was happening and having somebody that you're going to and you are sharing the experiences and then also having a one-on-one with self. Also walking because we were not allowed to be going out, but having that moment space to actually walk out in nature did something for me. But thinking that you can handle everybody's issues and that you'll be forever be strong, no. How do you identify signs that your students are struggling mentally? There are those who are very open and they can come to you and tell you. But it's also knowing your students. So for me, the class or the students that I had, I already knew what they were like prior to the pandemic. Someone might not show any signs. But when you take the time to say, are you really okay? Talk to me. What's happening? 
then that allows a person who might not be sh- sharing under normal circumstances to actually share. But some are very sensitive and they will be overly tearful. Others would be extremely rude in their responses, which would be alarming because you know them in a different way. Some would be highly sleepy, even their faces, you just felt the energy. How did you go about assisting those students? Luckily in that school we had pastoral person and also counseling and there were others also on the side that were available and the principal was also available as well. Some students needed more attention. So if the counselor could not, they would call in a psychologist. Would you say empathy played a major role in how you interact with students during the pandemic? I don't think I was aware of it, but yes, it did. Students need to feel connected. They need to know that somebody cares. Um, they need to know that somebody can listen to them. You're all going through something major. So empathy is being a very important thing in a situation that is highly stressful, not just for the school, but for the entire world.